Good morning, Steph. It's something many parents have been dreading. Back to online learning for thousands of students across Toronto and the GTA due to COVID outbreaks. And we've got a lot to break down this morning for you. Here is a look at the list of closures just within the Toronto District School Board. It includes Danforth, East York, and Riverdale Collegiate. Now, over a dozen schools shutting their doors to students until further notice, making the switch to remote learning starting today. And here is a look at school closures within the Toronto Catholic District School Board, including St. Gregory, Blessed Trinity, and St. Patrick. Public Health made the call to return to remote learning, but unlike other moves in the GTA, Toronto Public Health says it plans to manage any risks on a school-by-school -school basis. Meanwhile, Peel's top doctor makes the bold decision to shut down all schools in the region for the next two weeks. Students will learn remotely starting today. Dr. Lawrence Lowe says this closures gives classrooms a break from ongoing transmissions of the virus. Spring break will continue as scheduled next week. Education Minister Stephen Lecce commented on the shutdown, saying he believes schools should stay open for the mental well-being of students. All April break spring camps for school age children are cancelled. Brampton Mayor Patrick Brown is in support of Dr. Lowe's latest decision, tweeting that teachers should be vaccinated now so schools can remain open. The Dufferin Peel Catholic District School Board also moving a few schools to online learning due to outbreaks. Starting tomorrow, St. Andrew, St. Benedict and St. Peter Catholic Elementary Schools in Orangeville are shutting their doors for in-person learning. The school board says the tentative return date is Monday, April 19th after the mid-April break. But the decision will be up to their medical officer of health. And education workers are the focus of an online petition making the rounds today, calling on the provincial government to get them vaccinated as quickly as possible. The petition has already garnered 60,000 signatures with the goal of 75,000 signatures. Meantime, the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario will meet today to discuss the next steps if education workers aren't prioritized in the province's vaccine campaign. Top doctors in three hotspots are urging the province to impose tougher restrictions, including another stay-at-home order. The chief medical officer of health for Toronto, Peel and Ottawa, all penning the letter to Ontario's top doctor, David Williams. It says, in part, stronger measures will be required to reverse the surge our health units currently face. Adding a province-wide stay-at-home order is necessary to prevent large-scale deaths. They also asked to move all schools to remote learning, something doctors and experts tell City News reporter Adrian Gobriel they agree with. The spread is happening from children to their parents. And those are the ones, the 30s to 50 year olds who are filling the ICU at the moment. I would ask the minister to really take a deeper look into the numbers that they have and the, the, the data that they have and see how serious it is, right? how serious the situation is in school. They are asking the Minister of Education to follow Peel and move all schools to online learning. For a full list of closures across Toronto and the GTA, head to citynews.ca. The province losing the race to get ahead of the virus and ICUs reaching the breaking point. Ontario reported nearly 6,000 cases in the past two days. The number of ICU admissions continues to reach record highs, with nearly 500 people being admitted to ICU as of yesterday. On Monday, the province's positivity rate climbed to nearly 8 percent. The majority of the cases continue to come from Ontario's COVID hotspots, Toronto, Peel, York and Ottawa. And coming up just after 7 o'clock, we'll speak with COVID-19 biostatistician and educator Ryan Imgrind about the school closures and whether the province's latest measures are enough to beat the third wave. To World News, North Korea says it will not take part in this summer's Tokyo Olympics, becoming the first country to drop out due to concerns over COVID-19. And this comes as organizers are also expected to cancel a water polo event this weekend as Japan fights a fourth wave of the virus. Officials say the country will continue to work on infection control ahead of the games. North Korea's withdrawal is also a setback for South Korea, 
We're hoping the games could be used as a catalyst to improve relations between the two countries. The North has not missed the Summer Olympics since boycotting Seoul in 1988. Britain will start administering Moderna vaccines later this month. The country's health officials say the rollout of the shot will likely start by the third week of April. Most of Britain's vaccine supply has been from AstraZeneca. So far, over 30 million people in the UK have been vaccinated. The country hopes to have all adults get a first dose of a COVID vaccine by the end of July. One of the best performing stocks in the U.S. on Monday may surprise you. Movie theater companies. Why are monsters moneymakers? 680 News senior business editor Mike Apple tells us after the break.